Here we are at Radicam TV and we're going to do another video and we'll talk about the Denali sound bomb. Yeah, and this is the 120 decibel sound bomb. Wow. Yeah. I'm not, impressed. Not like the um, sound bomb mini that we fitted to the bike description up there somewhere where somebody described it as sounding like a Renault 4. Thanks for that. Nothing wrong with Renault 4s, you know. Well, However, yeah, even horn, this is a monstrous like it. horn. It is, it is. So, it, we've gone for the one piece, and I'll show it to this camera as well, the one piece horn. You can get it in a two piece where you have to have a, a pipe, don't you, to take the sound through to um, the speaker, I guess. That's a compressor. To the compressor. From the compressor to the mouthpiece. Do you know, you're so technical. <laughs> well, apparently I am. <laughs> no, it's much more than I do. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite a bit bigger than the normal sound bomb mini, hence the fact that this is just called the sound bomb. The actual mini is just the mouthpiece part of it, and that's electrical, isn't it? Just this bit here. Yeah. yeah. And we've had to buy a bracket, and I did buy this bracket from Nippy Normans, but it's £21. But it also, for our GSAs, our adventures, it means that it goes up underneath the, um, or in between the two forks, up underneath the handlebars, and just holds it in there really steady on one of the existing bolts. So to do that, they give you a long bolt, and they also give you a tiny little self-tapper screw because it comes with Why did you plug it together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, <Ooh. laughs> it comes with this what relay. Do call it? Relay. A relay. It comes with the relay. So that cut, that's one piece of our kit to fit to our motorbike. And then we had to buy a wiring harness. And that wiring harness comes in different lengths from 1.5, I think up to 5 metres. But I've gone. How big's your bike? Well, I've gone for, well, they do it for loads of different bikes. You think about the bagger. Yeah. If that didn't have a really good horn on there, you'd need a lot of, lot of wire to get it from one end to the other, wouldn't you? Yeah. I guess. But I've gone to be safe, and I've got the three-meter cable, uh -huh. just middle of the road. Safety's good. Yeah, and with that cable, middle you get... Middle of the road? Is that like a road joke? No. Comes road. Road. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It comes with spade connectors, covers, and a whole host of different bits of kit in there, which we probably won't end up using. And some zip ties, just in case you haven't got. But if you've seen one of our previous videos on what to take on a tour, you will have loads of these around the house. Well, yeah. Better so, on your bike, mine, because you're in the house and you break down, you need them, really. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, this wiring Can I hold one end of it? Hold one end it's of like it. It's like being on Blue Peter. Yeah. Now, it comes with handy instructions, which is great for people like me. People like you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know we're, I'm a bit of an idiot where it comes to fitting stuff, so it needs to be really easy. And this basically will, one end has got the connectors already on there, which is fab. That connects to the correspondent, corresponding plus and Corresponding? Minus. What's this get, Toby Day? <laughs> Corresponding plus or minus on the bottom. So once that's fitted to your bike, that will fit underneath and then feed through your bike all the way to the the relay. The relay, which will go. fit in there, and it will only go in one way, which is great for idiots like me. I can't un I can't plug it in the wrong way, which is brilliant. Bet you could. Well, <laughs> well yeah, these things might bend, might not they? But it plugs in one way, which is really good. Coming off that, yeah. we have a 30 amp fuse which connects to your battery. Yeah. Which is obviously the red bit. That connects to your battery. And then this is a ground. Or an earth. Or an earth. Yeah. Somewhere on your bike. And you can see that it's got the spade circle connectors. Spade will do. Yeah. Spade connectors on there were bound to get slated. They're round things. They will... It's obvious where that goes. Leading on from the relay, you then have two more spade connectors. Yeah. Now, the thing that we haven't got here to show you is the handy little DIN... Is it a DIN socket? It's for the CAN bus. The CAN bus socket for BMW. Bike, not obviously, but we run BMWs and they have the CAN bus system. 
can be a nightmare. Um, total nightmare. But <laughs> we have got the connections that we bought um, from Nippy Normans because they were the only people that were selling them that we could find at a reasonable price. Plugs into the CAN bus and then on the end of there were just two wires which we fitted the spade connections for our other horn. Incidentally, they will just plug into these. They'll plug in and away you go. It should be that simple. Should be. The reason I'll just explain why you have to connect it to your battery is the CAN bus system is not powerful enough on its own to power this horn. Mm. So that's why you've got to connect it to your battery. There you go. Yeah. Didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. There you go. See, we're learning all the time. All Every the day time. is a school day. Every day is a school day. That's it. That's it. What so, else would you like to talk about on them? Well, I we're going to go and fit it, aren't we? Let's go and fit it. So we're going to fit it and then we'll let you know how we... Because I think the most difficult bit is going to be where the wires actually go on the bike. And looking around loads of reviews and stuff, there are great, great reviews of how to fit it onto motorbikes throughout YouTube. But the one thing that they seem to miss that I'd like to put in is how they fed it through. Lots of people have taken the whole tank and all this stuff off the bike. I don't think you need to do that. But there should be adequate space to be able to feed it through underneath the tank properly, in through the frame and fit it properly. So what I'm going to do is go and fit it and then we'll see you in a few minutes where I can show you where we fitted it, how we fitted it and then hopefully if all goes well the bike doesn't just spontaneously combust <laughs> <laughs> when I turn it on. And melt. Yeah, and then we'll see what it sounds like. Right, there we are then. And hopefully you can see that but where it's mounted just down here there's enough gap in there to miss on both sides the only thing I had to do is when I mounted the sound bomb on the bracket is just make sure that it was kind of vertical in its position and it wasn't going to hit on anything but I've tested it both on the stand with the steering going full lock left full lock right and also on the ground not a problem at all fits perfectly so as you can see there's the Denali sound bomb there and it's fixed by the lower bolt that you can see just on your screen on the left hand side they provide a longer bolt which is great and it fits just right and then the two wires plus and minus plugged into the bottom of the sound bomb there and I've taped them I've zip clipped them onto here because that that cable never moves and then I fed the wire right up the back as you can see there going in behind the radiator and the CAN bus connector I've hooked up here and I fed it round behind the back. It all meets up in behind the fan and then comes into the back of this left hand fairing which is here and it follows the line all the way underneath and then the cable is coming out underneath zip clipped onto the frame all out of the way as neat as I could get it and then I've zip clipped it in a bit of a loop just to get it out of the way and it comes all the way back into the relay and then from the relay obviously goes back out and I've put the ground plug there which is just there and then fed the one with the live wire all the way down and underneath and obviously zip clipped it everywhere I could zip clip it and it's got the fuse in there that's been um, covered in insulation tape as well and I've chosen to put it in there purely because there's a cover that goes on the front here. So I'm trying to give it as much protection as I can. And then obviously the live cable goes straight back up onto the battery. And that is it. Now I did check to see whether the relay and the wiring would cause a problem for the seat. And there's loads of clearance underneath the seat from where I have it on the settings. So that's perfectly fine. It's all back in place now. And you really wouldn't know that it's been fitted. I was going to run the cable actually inside that fairing but there wasn't enough room to be able to screw it in without it not going back in place so it's right up and above away from all the heat sources and right back inside and out the front as you've seen so let's see no errors so far and I think you'll agree that this is much louder so sorry neighbours, it's not too late, it's only half past five in the evening, but listen to this. Now that is loud, you've got to admit it, much better than the 100 decibel Denali Soundbomb Mini, 
The Mini was really good. I thought that it was going to be loud enough, but nearly dying on the um, on the A30 uh, dual carriageway where I had quite an issue with a couple of drivers, one in particular that nearly took me off the road because she didn't clear my vehicle before she even decided to come in. And the Denali sound bomb, although I used it and was beeping and flashing my lights, it just wasn't that loud loud enough for her to be able to hear. So with the Denali sound bomb at 120 decibels, if not more, hopefully that's going to save my bacon a little bit, a little bit easier than the sound bomb mini did. So uh, really happy with how it turned out, really easy installation, literally just wires into the CAN bus, into the bottom of the sound bomb mini, feeding it through into the relay, onto the battery and the ground point, job done. About 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes at a push just to get it all done, neat and tidy. The Diff most difficult part was putting the cables actually in out the way so that you couldn't see it. Really happy with that. Denali sound bomb, 120 decibels. Brilliant. A few moments later. What a fantastic sound that horn makes. Much, much louder than the sound bomb mini, and I'm really glad that I fitted it because I nearly died on the way up to the motor show because they couldn't hear the horn that I had, even though I had a quite a loud horn. So this one hopefully will make the car veer off and crash out my way. <laughs> only joking just so that they're aware that I'm there so that's good really really good horn quite easy to fit quite easy to run the wires through as you've seen go out and buy one fit one it's got the rider cam thumbs up seal of approval there you go that's yeah. all you need that's all you need in life really yeah so if you like the video give it a massive thumbs up hit that subscribe button and we'll see you very shortly in the next video